First dates have the potential to be magical, fantastical, romantical, a night you will never forget. But they also got the potential to be straight booty. I mean, first dates are just a gamble, bro, especially if it's from a dating app. Like, you could show up to your first date with a 5'4 blonde Tinder girl and end up finding out she's 5'9. And she's brunette. And she's a dude. I mean, first dates from dating apps is kind of like buying one of those SpongeBob popsicles from an ice cream truck. Like, you know it's not going to look the same as the advertisement. But the question is, how fucked up can it really be? And let me just say extremely fucked up i'm talking massive buck teeth eyes crossed with a bite taken out of it and i'm not talking about the popsicles and these are the exact reasons my very first date was not from tinder also because i was in grade seven and uh that that would be illegal and when i was in grade seven i was 12 as as most grade sevens were and for whatever reason me and my homies loved going to the mall after school which was weird because we, we had no money so after another successful day of walking around and being too broke to buy anything we walked back to the bus terminal by the mall and as we walked up to our bus stop we see these two girls waiting there and the closer we got the more familiar these girls started looking until we realized one of them was in our class and so we walk up to them like yo are, are you kate oh shit billy bob and chains <laughs> what's up oh nothing much <laughs> how are you guys doing oh i'm good uh th this is jessica she's new to our school uh hi <laughs> what's up hello jessica oh, what what brings you guys to the mall oh nothing much just uh just walking around and not buying anything because we don't have any money <laughs> yo us too and so we all get on the bus and we're just talking and shit for a good 20 minutes until my stop comes up so i'll pull the thingy but before i get off the bus i ask jessica yo jessica uh do, do you snapchat by any chance y yeah i do L let me add you what's your snap name and i remember i had some shitty ass username like oh shit it's um MLG Pro No Scope or Illuminati Confirmed. Yo, kid, get the fuck off the bus. Uh, sorry, one second, please. Um, where was I? MLG Pro No Scoper Illuminati Confirmed. And when I got home, I went on Snapchat, accepted a request, and we started talking. And we snapped all night to the point I was smiling, kicking my feet in the air and shit. Yo, I'm coming in. No, 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 wait, wait, don't, don't. I'm, uh, I'm beating my meat. Wait, sh shit. Yo, what boy has you smiling like that? B boy it's a girl man shut the fuck up oh oh shit you're serious oh wait so the whole time you're watching powerpuff girl it just had a good plot okay bro okay so this is what you gotta know and my brother started running me through the do's and don'ts of being in a talking stage all right listen don't text her too much but don't text her too little don't talk to too many other girls yep, nope that, that won't be a problem right there yep I, I know buddy and uh you also gotta talk to her at school so the next day at lunch bob billy and i walk over to jessica and her two friends and we start talking again and we make plans to go to the mall together and boom Boom, all of a sudden we started forming a little friend group. It was me, Bob, and Billy with Jessica, Kate, and Nikki. And we started hanging out damn near every day, hitting the mall, buying nothing, going to Nikki's house, doing nothing. But we had fun, and so inevitably, Bob and Kate start having a thing, Billy and Nikki start having a thing, and that just left me and Jessica. And so one late night, we're on Snapchat with my feet kicking in the air faster than ever, and Jessica hits me with a, so I've been thinking, well, uh, I, I like you. I like you back. So, and I typed up, do you want to be my girlfriend? I fucking threw my phone across the room, nervous as hell. I get the notification. And when I go to check what she said, she was like, yes, I do. And call me Josh Giddy, the way I just bagged this 12 year old. But the next day at school, when me, Billy and Bob walk up to our girlfriends, I started getting all nervous and shit. There was something about the title of being a boyfriend that just had me shitting bricks, bro. It was like, hey, Chains, how are you? Oh, you know. Uh, I'm good. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Uh, how, how are you? Oh, I'm good. <laughs> <clears throat> but now that all three of the boys had acquired girlfriends, Billy was like, hey, wh why don't we all see a movie this weekend? Like, like it'll be a triple date. Oh yeah, that's God, a great idea. idea. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> it's a date. A uh, triple date. Yeah. Fuck, yeah. And by the time the weekend rolled around, I was still terrified of the fact that I was going on a date. And to be honest, I was also scared of the movie, bro. We came to watch It, which as a 12-year-old sounded like straight nightmare fuel, bro. But nonetheless, me, Bob, and Billy hop on the bus and arrive at the movie theater fashionably late. And so when we walk through the doors, there was our three little girlfriends excited for our first dates. So we all walk up, hug, and then go to get our tickets. And I drop my entire life savings on her ticket and then go into debt for mine, but Nonetheless, we head to the theater. Wait, sh should we get popcorn? Oh yeah, of course. 
Hey man, uh, how much is a large popcorn? A uh, large popcorn? Th th that'll be ten dollars. Damn! What, what happened? Are you, are you okay? Yeah, I just realized they ran out of popcorn. Are are you fucking stupid? Yeah, no, don't worry. Thank you, man. <laughs> is it no problem? <laughs> Have a good day. And we got to our seats and sat down, and the movie began. And as the movie progressed, I realized it wasn't even too scary, but about 20 minutes deep, I get a tap on my shoulder from Bob. And he gestures to me the fact that him and Kate are holding hands. And I look over to Billy and Nikki, and they're all cuddled up and shit. Which meant I had to make a move, bro, which inconveniently made my hands start sweating bullets. So now I was in a position where I couldn't just grab her hand while my shit was sweaty as hell cause then she'd think I'm weird but then I also couldn't just sit there and do nothing the whole time cause then she'd also think I'm weird so I just started doing the only thing I could think of which was blowing on my hand like some hot soup and believe it or not made me look fucking weird but at least my hand was dry so I go and hold her hand but when I do I make a grave mistake a, a tactical error bro when I held her hand my hand was on top and hers was underneath against the armrest and my dumb ass was scared I was gonna crush her arm or some shit and I don't know where I got the idea that I even could crush her arm from bro cause those 12 year old stickman arms couldn't crush a fucking pretzel if they tried but for whatever reason I decided my best option would be to hover my arm slightly above hers so my one pound arm couldn't come down and fucking demolish her forearm and you know this was cool for about 60 seconds until I started feeling the burn which started hurting so bad that I forgot I was even watching a movie I was just a hundred percent focused on thugging this shit out and about an hour into the movie I was just fucking shaking relentlessly I mean at this point it wasn't even about not having this girl think I was weird because lord knows it was too late for that shit but now it was about proving to myself that I could finish the movie this way and sure enough I did but at what cost? Wow, you, you were so scared you were shaking, huh? N no, I, I wasn't scared at all, actually. <laughs> uh, oh my god, uh, are, are you sweating? No. So, you know, looking back, it, it wasn't my best performance, you know what I'm saying? But with that being said, after that triple date, Billy's girlfriend, Nikki, ended up breaking up with him and gave up on dating dudes as a whole. So, I mean, psh. It could always be worse, bro. Get your money, man, like go. Oh, I'm hopeful, yes I am, hopeful. But today, take this music and use it. Let it take you away and be hopeful, hopeful. And he'll make a way. I know it ain't his aid, but that's okay, cause we hope to wish that you could show some love. None is that a hang so much when you see some other people coming now. I wish I could teach the world my screen. Why your music can have them chip enough to joy I bring. I wish that we can hold hand. Listen instead of dissing lessons from a grown man. And now, what's the families that lock but got love? Get some stocks, brand new shock in the lock, but some gloves. And now, there's a lot of things in life that I don't really understand. But if there's one thing I can truly comprehend, it's being grounded. Because in my time, I've served a total of 547 days and 16 hours in the slammer. And through a year and a half of extensive first hand research, I've come to the professional conclusion that getting grounded is straight ass bro you're locked in your room with no phone no computer like what do you want me to do think about my actions <laughs> Hell nah. Being grounded had a young me doing the stupidest shit ever, bro. Like, I was popping handstands, hitting my head against the wall, playing with the door stopper thingy. Shit, I got so bored, I even read a few pages of a book like an absolute nerd. And now that I think about it, Percy Jackson and the Battle of the Labyrinth was actually a spectacular read. Now listen, there's only one thing worse than being grounded, and that's being falsely imprisoned for life. Well, now that I think about it, there's a lot of things worse than being grounded, but, but one of which is being grounded during summer, bro. There's something about being able to hear all the happy children, the ice cream trucks, your homies having fun, the hoes throwing rocks at your window asking you to come outside. Well, you just cry yourself to sleep because there never was any hoes throwing rocks at your window asking you to come outside. It's just you, your Percy Jackson books, some used toilet paper, and the existential thoughts in your head questioning if it's even worth it. And listen, I'm sure everyone can pick up on the fact that I'm a really intelligent dude. Smart all around, really, but trust me when I say, I wasn't always this smart, bro. In fact, in kindergarten, my dumbass fully believed with my whole heart that being grounded meant your parents would just dig a decent-sized hole in your backyard, toss you in, and bury you alive for the time being. And so I'm sure you could have Imagine my surprise when my OG friend of five days said, yeah, I got grounded for two whole weeks. 
Holy fucking shit balls, dude. Are you okay? No, man. It's really hard. I, I didn't get to touch any of my toys or anything. Damn. How long ago was that, man? Oh, I'm still grounded. What? No, you're not. Yeah, dude. I'm grounded right now. No the fuck you're not. And I wouldn't truly find out what being grounded was until seven years later. I was in grade seven. It was a beautiful sunny summer day at approximately 11 a.m. And me and the boys were freely roaming our city. Little did I know we wouldn't be free for long. And as the boys and I roamed the city looking for a move, one of Bob's girls calls him up and is like, okay, so my friend Becky is in Hawaii for a few days with her family, and she said I could bring you over. And just like that, Bob could have wrapped it up and claimed some cheeks. But the boy Bob was never one to leave the homies behind. So not only did he convince his girl to let us come, but he went above and beyond. He got his girl to bring some of her friends over too. And now we're hyped because we had now located the move and quite a marvelous move if I do say so myself. Now keep in mind, all of us knew Becky and had been to Becky's house many times before, but Becky was all the way in Hawaii, so she had no clue about the marvelous move about to take place at her own crib. But regardless, me and the homies walk into Becky's crib and they low-key got a little get together in the works. I see Bob's girl, I see Bob's girl's friends, and then I see a mutual friend of mine named Dennis and he brought his girl. Now a little backstory about Dennis. Dennis was two years older than me, making him in high school, and to be fair, from grade seven to high school is a colossal difference. Dennis was taller, had a more developed frame, and Dennis even had some facial hair in progress. The amount of facial hair that put my peach fuzz to shame. And to put it quite simply, Dennis was a menace. But regardless, that's my homie's homie, so I walk up and dap him up. And then everyone heads over to Becky's room. Now keep in mind, Becky had simply invited Bob and Bob's girl to come over. And somehow, we ended up being eight people deep in that joint. And so that means technically, the other six of us were straight trespassing. So we were all chilling in Becky's room, chopping it up for a good hour and a half, until eventually, people start exploring her house. Now in Becky's room, it was just me, Bob, Bob's girl, girl and Bob's girl's friend named Lily. And so we're all just talking until I hear someone yell from the room down the hall. Yo, Chains, get in here right now. And I don't know exactly what I was expecting to see as I walked into that bathroom, but it was absolutely not seeing Dennis drop a condom filled with water on Billy's head. And of course I laugh because th that's, that's comedy gold right there. But it also made me realize maybe we shouldn't be here dropping condoms on each other's heads. But pfft, who was I to tell Dennis what to do? He had facial hair, so he was practically a grown man to my standards. So I just turned around, went back to the room, and continued chilling with Bob. And as we talked, the music progressively got louder, and Dennis progressively became more of a menace. And it had got to the point where the speakers were booming, and Dennis was lobbing condom water balloons off Becky's balcony. And then one time, Dennis either almost hit or just missed Becky's neighbor with one of these condom water balloons. So this grown man looks down at a condom that seems to have fell from the heavens. Then he looks up and sees Dennis scrambling inside the Becky's crib with the speakers blasting music. And then he continued on his way. And we were all just having a fantastic time in Becky's room until we hear the downstairs door swing open. And we all absolutely shit our pants and run onto the balcony. Hey. I just texted the family who lives here and they said no one is supposed to be in the house. Everyone needs to leave right now or I'm calling the cops. And that's exactly what we did. No messing around, we were out that hoe. And we all went to Bob's girl's house for an emergency meeting because we were all scared as fuck. And now Bob's girl and Becky are texting and Becky's like, my parents are pissed. They want to talk to everyone's parents and they know how many people were there. So we all devise a foolproof plan. Okay, we give Becky our phone numbers tell it's our parents' phone numbers, and we act super disappointed in our children. We all agreed on this plan, and the emergency meeting was dismissed. And over the next few days, we all got texts from a very unhappy Becky's father, who made sure to specify the amount of condoms that were found in the bathtub. We all respond with some bullshit along the lines of, Hello, Mr. Beckerson. I'm very sorry to hear about the inconsiderate acts of Chains and how he's invaded your home. Rest assured, Chains will feel the wrath of this thick leather belt as it repeatedly beats against his cheeks to discipline him for his heinous actions. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. But come to find out, Lily's dumbass responded with some shit like, Dear Mr. Beckerson, 
Thank you for letting me know, but Lily did nothing wrong, as she didn't know she wasn't allowed there. Plus, she didn't even make a mess or anything on God. Put some respect on my daughter's name. Period. And just like that, our foolproof plan got fucked. And Becky's father texted each of us saying, You are coming to the house at 3.15pm today, or I'm calling the cops. And shit, looking back, Becky's father was most definitely bluffing. Like, say I didn't go, what was he gonna tell the cops? 911, what's your emergency? Hey, uh, there, there was eight kids who invaded my home three days ago. Okay, sir, did they break in? No, uh... Well, no, no, no my, my daughter, my daughter gave them the key. Sir, why the fuck are you calling 911? Th 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 there was condoms in the bathtub. But like I said, I wasn't very smart and I didn't have the brain capacity to think that far ahead. So everyone shows up to the house and Becky's father sits us down and makes each of us individually call our parents and explain what we had done. And I went first. Hey mom, uh, so I went to Becky's house the other day but she was in Hawaii and I, I wasn't really invited. And there, there, there was condoms in the bathtub. Needless to say, we all got our shit whooped and I received my very first grounding with the sentence of one month in the slammer. If you saw this video, you would know my very first time drinking, I got both high and drunk at the same time. But my first time being drunk drunk takes place back when I was like 14 or 15. And this story takes place at my grandma's crib. No, no, listen, I know that sounds bad, but like... I mean, it's, it's pretty bad. So the story starts with me and my brother pulling up to the family function. And right off the bat, we notice the chill cousins are nowhere to be seen. So instantly we can tell it's gonna be a long night of engaging in conversations about school, sports, my lack of ability to pull bitches. And about five minutes after arriving, you know, I'm just doing some good old small talk. Oh, hey bud, how's school going? Oh, you know, it's going. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, how's sports going? Yeah, the, the sports are good. Nice. <clears throat> so, uh, the, the weather lately, huh? And then after about 20 minutes, me and my brother are just getting our shit flamed by every member of the family. No wonder you can't get a girlfriend. You're ugly as shit. <laughs> Damn, that, that, that was just mean. And don't get me started on you. You had a three year head start and still can't get any bitches. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, we just can't say anything back because last time I tried. Man, still no girlfriend. That's brutal. <laughs> <clears throat> Not as brutal as your third divorce, am I right? <laughs> Guys, so instead of flaming the living shit out of this grown man in front of his mom, I decide to be the bigger man. I just laughed that shit off and then got the fuck out of there before they brought up my school grades. So as my brother and I sit down in a different room, I'm just in agony thinking about how everything this dude flamed me for was actually true. But my brother on the other hand, he was whipping up some devious plan. Yo Chains, follow me. Oh, okay. So we walk down to the basement. So uh, what, what are we doing in the basement? He opens a cupboard full of alcohol. Bro just cracks the seal on some vodka and starts downing that shit. Now usually I would know this is a bad idea, but to be honest, I just got done getting my entire existence shit on by my own family. So I'm really just trying to drink my pain away at this point. I mean, we were passing that bottle drinking like rent was due and the wife was taking the kids. So with that being said, we, we got a little hammered. And keep in mind, this was my first time being drunk. So as soon as I stood up, I ate shit. It was like I had to relearn the controls of life. But we had to get out of the basement or else we'd look suspicious. So our drunk asses plug walked our way up the stairs. But we were trying to act as casual as possible. So we sit back down with the rest of the family like we didn't just down a bottle of vodka. And me and my bro were just sitting there looking at each other trying not to laugh. But the next thing I knew, this dude Uncle Jerry was back on my ass. Hey look, Dumb and Dumber are back. <laughs> and at this point, I'm using every bone in my body not to end this man's whole career. 
Man, whose gene is it that made you so damn hideous? <laughs> Don't do it, bro. Don't do it, bro. And I really didn't want to do him like that, but the vodka took control. It was your hideous gene, Gerald. But at least I didn't get the same gene that has you 5'2 and balding. Like, I can't tell if you're going through puberty oh or a midlife crisis. And shit, I didn't stop there. And Joe, I want to hear you talking. You're built like Baymax from Big Hero 6. What the fuck is Big Hero 6? Mom, I love you. Karen, sit down. Your mac and cheese tastes like ass. And Bob, you're literally a registered s*** offender. <laughs> Grandma, I love you. Bernard, your hairline looks like it's social distancing from your eyebrows. And Irene, how are you 47 and still work at McDonald's and you got no drip? Come on, bro. Friendly fire. Oh, shit. You're right. My bad. My bad. Needless to say, I was handing out smoke to everybody. Something in that vodka turned me to a demon. And I guess since everyone was mad at me for dissing the entire family, they never knew I was drunk as hell. But in the end, I did feel really bad for roasting my entire family tree. But ever since that day, everybody stopped flaming me. So, uh, <clears throat> it was worth it. Halloween is the spookiest time of the year. Everywhere you look, it's vampires, killer clowns, old dudes in white vans trying to steal some children, which are all very scary things, especially killer clowns. But none of these spooky things scare me more than my worst fear. Going to jail, dropping the soap, and getting my booty snatched up. Now that's some real spooky shit right there. And I know some people are going to be thinking, oh, that's just a myth. It's a stereotype. Nobody actually gets their booty snatched up for dropping some soap but when it comes to my booty i don't want to fuck around and i sure as hell don't want to find out but everyone knows drinking can heavily influence your judgment and on one specific day my judgment was affected and i found myself fucking around and everyone knows what the chart depicts the more you fuck around the more you find out this story takes place in grade 10 it was a crisp halloween night the houses were decorated the leaves had fallen and the jackals were landing Turn. And as me and Billy walked down to the homie Bob's crib, we could pretty much smell that Halloween spirit. And when we knocked on Bob's door, we were surprised the homie Bob didn't open the door. It was Bob the Builder. Dude was fully suited up from head to toe. And when me and Billy seen that, we already knew we needed some costumes. So we go to Bob's closet and come out absolutely dripping into Mario and Luigi costumes, mustache and everything. But now that we undeniably had that shit on, we still had yet to find something to do but lucky for us the night was still young so we got to brainstorming all right it's halloween bro we, we gotta do something yeah let's go find a party bet let me check where they're at mm -hmm. okay y yeah there's no parties bro fuck I, I mean we could trick or treat shit we might have to bro and just as three 15 year olds decided we would knock on strangers doors asking for candy our halloween was looking grim and not in a good way but you know what they say can we fix it Yes, we can. Because Bob pulls through and sets up a goddamn three-man mission. And just like that, Halloween goes from an L to a W night. And I thought the homies and I couldn't get more hype, that is, until Bob pulls out a bottle of Hennessy. And you would have thought Peach took the kids the way I was abusing that bottle. And we passed it around until we were all tipsy. Then we started walking to Chloe's house for the little Halloween three-man. And it was already 9 p.m. at this point, so we're walking through the neighborhood admiring these decorations when we see the creepiest house of them all it was chloe's crib so we walk through a whole graveyard just to knock on the door and chloe opens it looking like a whole angel i, I mean like like literally like she had the halo and the, the, the wings and shit so we go up to her room where her two friends lucy and mia were and we sit on her bed and i'm not gonna lie it was a little awkward, bro. I was sitting there with my Mario fit, my little mustache, like, so, uh, uh, uh Chloe, why'd you choose to be an angel? Uh, I don't know. I just liked it. Uh, why'd you choose to be Mario? Shit, uh, you know, uh, Mama Mia, am I right? <laughs> Shit. Fuck. Then Chloe whips out some tequila and all of a sudden we're playing drinking games and shit. But honestly, I was just trying to get drunk. So it'd be like, haha, drink up. Oh no. All right, it's your turn. Wait, you're supposed to get it in my cup. What the fuck? And after purposely selling multiple games of tequila pong, I was feeling what some would call... 
completely and utterly drunk as fuck. And next thing I know, we're playing spin the bottle. And I was up. So I spin the bottle and it spins and spins and lands on Chloe. And in my head, I'm thinking... <laughs> And just as Mario's about to get some peaches, we hear the door open downstairs and Chloe's like, Oh shit, my parents are home. Hide. So me and the homies run into her closet with a bottle of tequila and we can hear her dad come into the room. Hey, what's going on up here? Oh, you know, we're, ju we're just watching scary movies. All right, uh, I'll be downstairs watching TV. Let me know if you need anything. Thanks, dad. And once her dad went downstairs, we all came out of the... We, e we exited the closet and Chloe said, You guys gotta sneak out through the front door. J just be super quiet. And so we creep down the stairs and peek around the corner and Chloe's parents are right there with a clear sight of the door. So we know what we have to do. We take a shot for good measure and then run to the door. And my drunk ass couldn't even figure out how to unlock this fucking door. Hey, who is that? Uh, uh, it, uh, uh it's -a me, I'm Mario. Then we ran out that joint and we didn't stop running until I got a call from one of my homies named Dave. He was like, yo, what are you doing right now? Oh, no nothing really. Just drunk as hell running from Chloe's angry ass dad. Yo. That's what's up. Come link me and Joe at Stickman Elementary. And we had nothing else to do, so we pull up. And it's Dave, Dave's girlfriend, Joe, and Joe's girlfriend. And they got some couple's costumes going, but I couldn't help but notice Dave and Joe were shystied up. What are you? If the Simpsons grew up in Chicago? <laughs> nah, I'm just Homer. Yeah, but I mean, Homer doesn't usually wear a fucking ski mask. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. I just wore this because we graffitied the hell out of this school. <laughs> Joe was here and... And Dave was too? Bro, what the fuck were you thinking? W what? Oh, you want me to include your name too? No, 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 hell no. And just as we become guilty by association, four cop cars come zooming down the street. Oh shit, it's the cops, run! And the cops hop out of their cars and start running at us with flashlights. So we head for the forest, but to get to the forest, we had to run across this long ass muddy field. And in the middle of this field, there was a huge pothole. And how did I know that? Because I seen Marge absolutely eat shit right in front of me. And don't get me wrong, I was absolutely plastered but as the cops got closer and closer i could practically see myself getting caught and dropping the soap and you know i wasn't gonna let that happen and so with all that adrenaline i mario jumped that fucking pothole and hauled ass into the forest and right when you get into the forest there was this deep creek with a log going across it but when i look back i see the cops flashlight getting brighter and brighter so i say fuck it and take a run at this log i get a good two steps and then my drunk ass slips boom right into the muddy creek but i I don't have time to give a single fuck so i run through this waist high muddy water and then we regroup and check who made it i see bob joe dave and dave's girl y yo where the fuck is billy no where's my girlfriend bro oh she ate shit a few yards back whoa, wait wait what I is she okay did she get whoa, wait, caught shut up billy's calling yo where are you I i'm hiding behind a tree right now in the middle of the field. The, the cops are looking for me. I bet we're coming. I gotta go. Fuck no, bro. If you go, you're gonna get caught. Listen, bro. I have to. He, he's the Luigi to my Mario. So I go back in to save Billy and my main man, Bob, comes with me. So we get to the edge of the forest and see Billy absolutely shitting his pants trying to hide from these cops, but they keep getting closer and closer. So Bob turns on his flashlight and both cops look at him. He's right there. Get over here. And while the cops were looking for Bob, me and Billy both run for the street and we ran and ran but once we were at least five blocks away we text bob like bro we both made it are you good and bob's like so Bob makes it out of the forest and we all link up. And we take a moment to appreciate the fact that none of us went to jail. And more importantly, none of us got our booty snatched up. And after our moment of appreciation, we were like, yo, maybe we should have just went trick-or-treating. Yeah, bro, some Reese's Pieces would hit right now. Mm. I mean, it's not too late to buy some candy. So we all go to the store and cop the biggest packs of candy we could find. Then we walked back to Bob's crib and enjoyed the rest of our night while fucking up some house. Halloween candy. For most of my life, I've known how to swim. But by that, I mean, if my life depended on it, I could swim from one place to another. I don't even know if swim is the right word. Like, if you saw me casually enjoying a little swim at the pool, you'd be like, D -d does he need help? Like, is he drowning? I mean, like, I did take swimming lessons, but I quit at level alligator, bro. I, I never even made it to level one. With that being said, this incident dates way back to when I was in grade four. We were going on a field trip, and of course, it's to the pool. But I'm not stressing. I, I know I safely passed level penguin, so I should be chilling. 
My whole class and I walk into the entrance of the pool, but before anyone was allowed in the pool, they asked everyone if they knew how to swim. And I thought, we're in grade four, there is no way somebody still doesn't know how to swim. And just as I presumed, nobody needed a life jacket. So me and the gang are swimming around, you know, jumping off the diving boards. Fun stuff for a grade four field trip. But after about an hour, my friends and I are just chilling in the deep end. And that's when I see a kid in my class named Ben on some floaty things coming in our direction. A little backstory about Ben, for as long as I can remember, this dude has been on my nuts. So when I saw this dude coming in my direction, I assumed he just wanted to say hi or something. But as he made his way towards me, I could tell he was struggling. So I swim over to help him out. Oh, hey Ben. Uh, how are you? This kid jumps off the floaty thing onto me. And this man has the meanest grip on me. Pause. Well, this shit had to be some sort of attempted murder, bro, because he had me in a chokehold and his legs were wrapped around my arms. But they did not prepare me for this shit level alligator. So instantly I start sinking and I hit the bottom of the pool. Keep in mind, Ben is chilling on top of me with his head out of the water this whole time. So I jump off the bottom of the pool just enough to get my head out of the water for a few seconds. <gasps> ben, get off me. And when I look up, I see this dude, Ben, with the straightest face in the world. Like this motherfucker has no clue I'm out here fighting for my life. And he says in the most monotone voice, I can't swim. Ah, oh, hell nah. I'm trying to fight him off me, but keep in mind my arms are tied up. So I gather all the strength out of my skinny ass grade four legs and I jump just enough to get my head out of the water again. <gasps> Lifeguard, help! Oh, you guys, stop playing around in the pool. That's it. I I'm fucked. I I'm dead. And out of sheer anger, I decide, fuck it. If I'm dying, you're dying with me. I duck as far as I can under the water so both me and Ben can't breathe. But I'm running out of air. I start to get lightheaded. Man, that's crazy. This is really how I die, huh? And just as I had lost hope, my main man Bob comes in on some Superman shit, pulls Ben off me, and swims me over to the shallow end. I cough up some water, but eventually I catch my breath. So that's the story of how I almost died. And it's also the story of why I owe my life to Bob. There's levels to friendships. I mean, you could have known your homie since you were two years old. You could have lived together. I mean, you could have survived the whole zombie apocalypse together. But shit, the truth is, you haven't truly experienced brotherhood until you and your homie have participated in a two-man mission. Like, just look at Kobe and Shaq, man. That type of chemistry can only be achieved by running a two-man. Shit, I bet these motherfuckers were running two-mans every night. And you already know Kobe was laying down that Mamba mentality while Shaq had his girl O kneeling. But for those of you who may be wondering, Chains, what the hell is a two-man mission? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's quite simple, really. It's when you're gonna link with a girl, but you bring your homie and she brings her homie. And what this does is it sets an environment when you and your homie me can dribble, pass, alley-oop, and ideally dunk that shit. Now don't get me wrong, it's simple, but not easy. I remember my first two-man mission like it was yesterday. It took place when I was in grade seven. And it started when my friend Joe hit me up like, yo bro, I'm going to this girl Sophie's house and her friend Ava's there. You, you trying to pull up? And I was like, am I trying to pull up? Hell yeah, I'm trying to pull up. So we show up to her house and I'm new to this whole thing. So I'm sitting there like, ah, uh, so up. Uh, what now? We, we could watch a scary movie. Yeah, let's do it. I'm down. Uh, well, actually, uh, personally, I'm not a big fan of scary movies. Man, shut the fuck. So we're watching this scary movie, and to be honest with you, it was simply the best scary movie I'd ever seen in my entire life. So I was really getting invested in this plot. And Ava's like, oh my god, I'm scared. <laughs> and that shit went way over my head. What? 
Why? It's not even at the scary part yet. And then only 30 minutes into the movie, Joe and Sophie are like, Yo, we'll be right back. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, do you guys want me to pause the movie? <laughs> nah, it's all good, bro. And you see, what Joe just did right there was a calculated move. In basketball terms, he just said an ISO. So now it was two 1v1s. And the situation was absolutely perfect, but the problem was... I actually like the fucking movie. And that violates rule number three in section seven of how to pull off a success successful too man never give a fuck about the movie because the truth is the movie length is like the shot clock if you end up actually watching the entire movie you failed the mission but i had no clue and to be honest i, I didn't even know what a two man was at the time so i got some popcorn and i was just watching the movie but when the climax of the movie was about to come around i did something that violated every term and agreement of the two man mission i went over to joe and sophie like hey Hey guys, quick, you're gonna miss the best pro- Oh, fuck. And I missed the climax of the movie, but shit, I seen a climax. And needless to say, Joe never invited me to a two-man mission since. But you know I had to redeem myself, even if it was three years later when I was in grade 10. It was a Saturday night, and me and Bob were looking for something to do. And I'm gonna keep it a stack with you, bro. I had no motion. Like, my Snapchat was drier than a Popeye's biscuit, bro. But lucky for me, Bob had a roster. And I'm talking an old all-star lineup of girls who just want Bob on their body. And I don't blame them. I mean, shit, I got Bob on my body right now. And you can too at chainsclub.shop. That's right, we got hoodies, shirts, beanies, socks, keychains, stickers, you name it. And starting at the price of 420, Bob can be all yours. <laughs> or if you want me, I, I wouldn't mind being on your keychain or something. <laughs> Treat me like white tea. So as I was saying, me and Bob were bored. So Bob hits up this girl named Avery like, what are you doing right now? And she's like, just chilling. Who you with? My friend Alice. Let's link. I'm with my homie. Okay, is he cute? cute as hell okay come over and i'm excited as fuck so we get bob's sister to drive us to avery's crib and as we pull up to her house i remember a crucial detail that i'd been forgetting this whole time i I was scared of the hoes, bruh. And as we walked up to her door, I was starting to get flashbacks of me and Joe's two man, where Joe tossed up an alley-oop for both of us, and I blocked his shot, metaphorically and literally. And as I'm psyching myself up, Bob calls Avery to tell her we're here, and she's like, so, uh, my, my parents are asleep, so you're gonna have to come in through my window. Shit. So we walk around the side of the house to Avery's room, and lucky for us, there's this big-ass window, and I'm like, yo, can you open it so we can get in? And she's like, uh, it, it is open. Bro, only this tiny ass rectangle in the top left was open at a 60 degree angle. But that was our only way in, so I helped Bob up and through the window. But now I gotta get up there, and I'm bigger than Bob, so I put my head through, and I'm trying to slowly creep into the room, and then I lean just a little too far, and I'm headed face first onto Alice's hardwood floor. And listen, Bob has come in clutch many times. He saved me from drowning, coyotes, getting in trouble, but out of all these things i'm most grateful for bob catching me as i fell through this fucking window because drowning and dying would have been pretty bad like boohoo rip chains you know what i'm saying but imagine falling through a window and eating shit face first in front of the hoes like i would have preferred the drowning bro but after that close call I, I was a little flabbergasted you know what i'm saying but alice has the audacity to ask me this loaded ass question like oh hey wh what's your name uh me yeah you uh it it's a uh, uh, the name's for real. Chains for real. Nice to meet you, Mr. For real. I'm Alice. And so we all just started talking and shit, but I keep noticing Alice was getting a bunch of text messages. And I remember thinking it was probably her mom or something, so I shrugged that shit off and I'm like, yo, we should watch a movie. Yeah, oh we should. God, yeah. And I wasn't about to make the same mistake I made last time. So I found the most dog shit horror movie on the face of Netflix and threw that shit on. And man, that shit was ass. In fact, it was so ass that we just started cuddling and shit. Like, what else was there to do? But now that we were close, I could feel the vibrations of Alice's phone getting a call. So she's like, one second, I'll be right back. And I wasn't trying to eavesdrop, but I could low-key hear what she was saying through the door. I'm just at Avery's house. We're watching a movie. Oh my God. Okay, that's fine. 
Okay. But when she comes back, she puts a pillow between us. Like the same type of shit two dudes do to make sure they don't fuck in their sleep. And I'm trying to piece everything together. And as I'm coming to the conclusion that this girl has a boyfriend, I hear footsteps coming towards the door. And when the door opens, I'm fucking bamboozled to see a 60-year-old man who looks furious. And I'm just hoping this isn't Alice's boyfriend. Because if it is, we got bigger problems on our hands. But as I seen the way this man looked at Bob, I realized he's Avery's dad. And Bob Bob wasted no time jumping out that fucking window. But for me, let's just say that shit wasn't very elegant. Cause I got stuck for what felt like five minutes making eye contact with this grown ass man. Well, what are you, what are you trying to seduce my dad or something? Like, like get the fuck out. And I'm not gonna lie, we ran, bro. And once we made it home, me and Bob were relieved. But when I go to check my phone, I got a little notification on Snapchat. And I'm expecting it to be Alice or, or maybe even Team Snapchat or something. I don't know. But I sure as hell wasn't expecting it it to be a motherfucker named Ryan Donaldson. And Ryan must have woke up on the wrong side of the bed this morning because he's like, what the fuck did you do, dude? So I hit him back with a, who this? And he's like, Ryan Donaldson. Yeah, no, I can see your username, bruh. But I have no clue who you are. I'm Alice's boyfriend, bitch. And Ryan got his shit hit with an instant block, bro. And so the moral of the story is, if you're gonna hang out with a girl who has a boyfriend, turn off your snap maps, bruh. April 20th. 420, the day when everyone puts their differences aside and they just hotbox the Earth's entire atmosphere. Man, what a time to be alive. Now, I don't know if any of y'all have gone to one of those 420 conventions before, but god damn. These motherfuckers be getting higher than Buzz Lightyear, bro. Like, at this point, they aren't even baked. They're, they're fucking dead deep fried they just be walking around hotboxing cities at a time and anyone in a 500 foot radius is gonna start feeling the effects of that mary jane like i remember my first time going to one of these things and uh i, I was still a minor with an o however i had done some pregame before the convention so let me just put it like this if i was a potato I would have been a baked potato. So heading into the convention, I was already a little bit paranoid because as I looked around, all I could see was a bunch of hippie dudes with beards and shit. And at the time, I was just repping that peach fuzz. I, I was standing out like a sore thumb. So you can only imagine how hard I was shitting my pants when my high ass saw a cop walking in my direction i instantly started brainstorming how i was gonna outmaneuver this cop so he doesn't send my ass to jail so boom busted a right dropped the shoulder hit a left and i ran into this crowd of people and i don't know about y'all but for me whenever something remotely scary happens while i'm zooted i'm gonna be paranoid for the rest of my high so in my high ass brain I i'm like a wanted criminal I, I got five stars right now so i'm out here constantly scanning the area for 12 right but i start to make some notable observations i realize half these motherfuckers are wearing sunglasses and it's not even sunny like how the fuck did i miss the memo this bad but luckily for me there's hundreds of dudes selling overpriced random ass shit so it really didn't take long for me to find a dude selling sunglasses and even though it was 25 bones for these shitty ass sunglasses i still cop them so i can hide my identity and of course the glasses have the devil's lettuce plastered all over them but i'm el chapo level wanted at this point so i'm doing anything i can to hide my identity including dropping my life savings on these dog shit glasses. So I'm out here pushing through these groups of people, but I'm keeping it low key. And as I'm scanning to the right of me and to the left of me, my dumbass pretty much walks right up to a cop. And the moment I realized that homie was right in front of me looking at me, I started to panic, bro. I felt like at this point, my best option was just to confess. Like if I take the plea deal, I'll definitely get a lower sentence. But as I was stressing heavy, that adrenaline starts to kick in and i know some of y'all can relate to this but the scientific breakdown shows that when you're zooted and you get into a high stress scenario the adrenaline gears up and starts beefing with the thc in your brain now if you're lucky the adrenaline will beat the thc's ass and will have you thinking properly in said stressful situation which is exactly what happened to your boy so as i transform from a baked potato into a less baked potato this is where the table really started to turn I looked at this cop in the eyes and this motherfucker was more baked than me like shit at this point I'm about to put this dude on citizens arrest uh, officer are, are, are you baked right now? No, no, it, uh, there's a <clears throat> sorry there 
There's, there seems to be a lot of cannabis in the air right now, and so it's like... <laughs> this poor officer probably had to pull an eight-hour shift in the world's biggest hotbox while trying to do his job. And needless to say, after realizing the officers were faded than a hoe, I had no problem walking around with my peach fuzz mustache and a vape. Until one day at Vaporizer Laboratories, they were cooking up and made a flavor that would change the game forever cotton candy. Now this revolutionary flavor forced these grown ass 30 year old men to take a good look in the mirror and ask themselves, damn, what do I look like as a grown ass man sucking on this goddamn cotton candy stick? So they do what any responsible adult would do. They give it to their children. I mean, shit, kids love cotton candy. All of a sudden business is booming for vaporizer laboratories. So they start cooking up even harder. Boom, sour patch kids juice. Boom, applesauce juice. And boom, baby food juice. These babies will be sucking that shit like a soother. Kids first words will be looking like, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, honey. Jackson's yeah. gonna say his first yeah. words. Yeah. Oh, let's hear it. Yo. Y yo, pops. Well, let me bum a hit off that 50 Nick Guava Ice, G. Yo, just wait till they drop that breast milk flavor, bro. Shit, these newborn babies won't even know what hit them. They'll be returning customers for life, which which will probably be like 12 years max. Now, the reason I say all this is to let you know that vaping not only intruded my high school years, but also my years in middle school. I was first introduced to these bad boys at the ripe age of 13. And with a little bit of that good old peer pressure, I folded, bro. Like, what was I supposed to do, bro? Like, like not take the hit? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I probably should not have taken a hit. But from that point on, I started doing a little dabbling, you know. I, I mean, as a 13-year-old, there's only one answer to someone asking. <laughs> Yo, dude, you want to try a hit of this blueberry guacamole milkshake ice flavor, dude? And that answer is absolutely, dude. And I was never a fiend or anything, but I will say, I popped a few ghosts and blown a few O's back in my day. But it had never gone to the point of me owning a vape until... Till one day. This story takes place way, way, way back in grade seven. Me and the boys were posted in science class dissecting cow balls or some shit when Mr. Principal burst through the door like, Is Tessa here? Yeah, yeah, she's right there. And I look at Tessa and she just tosses her vape over to her homie, Kate. And I seen that shit clear as day, but Mr. Principal's old ass must have forgot to wear his contacts or something. Cause he runs a quick pat down on Tessa looking for said vape, but sure enough, he doesn't find it. Miss Rhodes told me you were vaping in her class. Is this true? Psst. No, I would never. Oh, <clears throat> uh, okay. And then the bell rang and everybody knew what that meant. It was nut break. Now, I don't know who the fuck decided to name our recess nut break, but I will say most of the students understood that that shit was short for nutrition break. However, some kids took it a little too literally. Weird ass school, man. But this specific nut break, you best believe me and the boys weren't busting nuts or eating nutritional foods because Billy had something else on his mind. Yo, who's got you smiling like that? Who, me? <laughs> nah, 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 it's nobody. It's nobody. Yo, wait, you got a crush on Tessa? <laughs> what? T Tessa? <laughs> me? <cr> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I got a crush on, yeah. Oh, shit, go, go talk to her, bro. <laughs> talk to her. <laughs> no. No. Uh, no. Bro, it's simple. She's new to the school. She's probably looking for some friends, so just just walk over and introduce yourself. <sighs> You're right. I, I'm, I'm just gonna do it. Yes, sir. Hey, I I I I just I, 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 Did I just sell that shit? Yup. Y you did. Then the bell rings and we all go to PE class. Now in my middle school, your class was your class. You just have the same students and the same underqualified teacher teaching everything. Like Lord knows Mr. Donaldson shouldn't be teaching PE, but shit. Here we are. And so while we're playing dodgeball, I'm trying to coach Billy on how to confess his love for Tessa, but I'm gonna keep it a buck. I was speaking straight out of my ass, bro. I don't know the first thing about confessing love. Listen, bro, I'm the expert when it comes to confessing love. All you gotta do is walk up with confidence, introduce yourself, and then ask her to be your girlfriend, bro. <sighs> okay, simple. Let, let's practice. <clears throat> 
Hey Vanessa, <laughs> my name's Billy and um did do you want to be my girlfriend? Damn! And after the proper training, by the time lunch came around, Billy was prepared to do what had to be done. I right, listen, bro. Whatever happens out there, me and Bob got your back. And remember, the worst she can say is no, bro. <sighs> Alright, I'm ready. You got this. Uh, hey, Vanessa. I I'm Billy. Um, I, I seen you in science class today, and you were looking very pretty. And, um, is it do you want to... Do you want to be my girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck no! <laughs> she laughed, bro. She laughed in Billy's face. And he walks back to us with tears in his eyes. <laughs> she laughed at me, bro. Well, at least at least you, you know what they say. What? What? If, if you can make her laugh and giggle, you can make the cheeks clap and Not jiggle. Not right now, bro. You're right. Too soon. Too soon. Needless to say, that brother Billy went home that night, listened to Juice World, and cried himself to sleep. Shit, the next day, Billy didn't even say a word, but I could hear lucid dreams on full blast in those earbuds. Man, it's a tough sight to see. Next thing I know, Mr. Principal bursts in the class talking about, All right, Tessa, in my office right now. Now, I don't know why she was in trouble, but whatever she was accused of, she's guilty, bro. And she's also guilty on one third degree count of breaking my man's heart and as i'm busy praying on tessa's downfall i get a little tap on my shoulder like Psst, take this mr principal's looking for it and he's not gonna check you Who, whose is it it's tessa don't worry it's safe with me and it was safe with me because that shit was now mine the only way she could get it back is if she repaired my boy billy's heart and that just wasn't happening. And soon enough, Tessa comes back from Mr. Principal's office and she didn't say a word. We had nut break, nothing. We went to PE, nothing. And then we went to math class. And as I was chilling in math class, calculating the square root of pi and shit, I get a tap on my shoulder again. Psst, Tessa wants her vape back. Vape? What vape? The the one I handed you this morning, you, you know, it, it was purple. And... Oh, that vape. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I threw that shit in the bushes. <gasps> so she reports back to the person who gave her the vape, and she reports back to the person who gave her the vape, etc., etc., until Tessa finds out, and she looks pissed. So she whispers to her friend, who whispers to her friend, etc., etc. What, what, what bush did you throw it in? Oh, the. The, the one out back. And to put it in perspective, the bush out back was fucking massive. It was this huge conglomerate of straight prickle bushes. And so pretty much, her vape was gone, bro. And I went to sleep that night with a smile on my face, knowing I not only saved Tessa's lungs, but also Billy's heart. The next day, I went to class, sat down with the boys as always, but something was different. Tessa and her homies were nowhere to be seen. I shrug it off and continue to make some groundbreaking in studies in science class until I hear Billy like, bro, no fucking way. So I turn around to not only see Tessa and her friends waist high in prickle bushes looking for this vape, but I also see Mr. Principal forcing them to do it. Now this was truly a beautiful sight to see revenge play out this perfectly. Like Billy was sitting at the window the entire class watching him do a whole search party for this vape that was posted in my pocket and just when i thought billy couldn't get happier the next day tessa and her friends had to present a powerpoint to the entire school on why vaping is bad uh so uh, vaping is bad because like like uh when the vape enters your lungs well, it's not good for your lungs <laughs> man karma is real because not only did tessa understand how it felt to be laughed at but the next day my friend came up to me like can i use that vape for the day and i wasn't using that shit so i said yeah sure and at the end of the day you'll never guess what she told me bro yo you still got the vape no no i, I threw it in the bush out back your very first time buying from the plug it's a special moment it marks the beginning of a bond a bond so strong and full of trust that it can only compare to that of your barber now your first time copping from the plug can go many different ways but my first time took place way 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 
back when I was seven. Okay, that's cap, but I was I was 13. Now, as some 13-year-olds, my homies and I were oblivious of how to get our hands on some sweet, sweet, juicy, succulent, magic broccoli. But you know what they say, if there's a will, there's a way. So we did what any seventh grader would do. We searched that shit up on Google. Where do I buy weed? And somehow, one of the first things that came up was some motherfucker on Reddit, like, J just order a pizza? The, the pizza delivery guy stands a 78% chance of being baked. Just ask him where to find some gas. Simple as oh, that, yeah. man. Oh, bet. So we call up Lil Caesars, like, hello, can I, can I get a medium pepperoni pizza, please? Yeah. Yo. I bet. And about 45 minutes later, the doorbell rings. We open the door to see some 48-year-old man who's probably going through his second divorce. Sh should we ask him? Yo, he does not know where to find that shit. Oh, uh, th th that'll be 1369. Uh, here, he here you go. All right, have a good day. But wait, um, do, do, do you happen to know where to find some of that? Some of that good dope. Good dope? Oh, I see what you're saying. If you wanted some ranch dip, just say that. Nah, 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 nah. What, what he's trying to say here is, do you know where to find some of that good, good shit? Ah, oh, you want some good shit, huh? You sure won't find it at Lil Caesars. <laughs> this pizza is ass. Go to Pizza Hut or something. <laughs> Well, shit. What the fuck just happened? Okay, the guy on Reddit said there's a 78% chance. Maybe we just got unlucky with this one. And our dumbasses decide to order from Little Caesars again. Uh, that, that, that'll be 13. Okay, new plan. Yo, I think I know a guy. So Bob locates a local plug Snapchat. Billy adds him, and bro adds back. So now we've located the plug, but we had no clue on how to go about hitting this man up. Hello, Frederick Gordon Williams. I have reason to believe you are a plug and will be able to sell us some devil's lettuce as we are minors, currently 13 years old. Just give us your home address and we will skirt and pull up soon. Sincerely, Billy. Instantly blocked, bro. Looking back, we sent the most federal message possible. We hit this man with his government name and asked him for his home address. But we had no clue that was federal. Like, huh, that's peculiar. I wonder why he blocked us. So we did what any seventh grader would do. We searched that shit up on Google. How to hit up the plug. Be simple and forward. Use slang. Act cool. And after conducting a little more research, we were ready to try again. So I added him on my Snapchat. Yo, 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 Big G. L let me cop some of that gas real quick, Cronum. Oh, shit, he responded. H how much you need? Sh shit, wh what do I say? Search it up. Uh, th three pre-rolls, three pre-rolls. Let me get three pre-rolls, fam. All right, meet me at Stickman Park at 2.30. So now we'd set a place and a time to cop some grass. However, what Frederick Gordon Williams didn't know was that we were a whopping 13 years old. Keep in mind, we were still in middle school, but this dude was in grade 10. Shit, I'm pretty sure he was 20 years old, but, but, but still in grade 10, which was pretty fucking scary for us seventh graders. So we threw on some drip we believed would make us look a little bit older, and we headed off to purchase some of Satan's spinach. We arrived at the park a little bit early and as we waited we discussed our plan if he asks how old we are we're 16 if he asks our grade we're grade 10 if he asks our pronouns we are he slash bro chili he's not gonna interrogate us it's a simple business transaction Oh shit, there he is. And as Frederick approached us, I could feel my blood pressure rising. Some would say I was shitting bricks. Yo, you got the money? Uh, uh um, how much is it? How much you got? Well, I, I, I brought a, a $50 bill. Shit, it's usually 60, but I guess I can do it for 50. Oh, th thank you so much, man. Holy shit, this is a fucking steal. Here you go, but remember, this is OG Bubba Killer Death Paralyzing Kush 9000. 
It got its name for a reason. Don't worry, we do weed all the time. Yeah, we're super teenager and shit. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, whatever, man. Well, well, have a good day, sir. And at last, 50 bones later, we had acquired some kush. Now, this wasn't our first time smoking, but our tolerance levels were low as fuck. So we pass around our first pre-roll, coughing <coughs> up a fucking storm. <coughs> And then we smoke up the next one and the next one until we're indubitably zooted. <clears throat> God damn. Are y'all feeling it? Shit. Yeah, I'm feeling it. Well, what about you, Chains? Shit, I think he's feeling it. And as we made our way back to Bob's crib, my frame rates were dropping, my eyes were drying up, and my brain cells were unresponsive. In other words, I was fucking fried. We get back to Bob's crib and all I can think about is food. The munchies had hijacked my brain, but luckily for me, Bob's mom had just went shopping. Unluckily for Bob's mom, she was gonna have to go shopping again. The boys and I threw on the amazing world of gumball on TV and we fucking demolished every single crumb from Bob's cabinet. Cause goddamn, Frederick Gordon Williams was right. They don't call it the OG Bubba Killer Death Paralyzing Kush 9000 for no reason. Being absolutely faded in math class is one thing, but pulling up to school while you're hammered, wasted, absolutely plastered is simply a different ball game. Cause there's lots of people who can properly utilize that Mary Jane on a daily basis. For example, tattoo artists. In fact, I feel like majority of tattoo artists would say, it uh, it helps me work better, dude. And I would happily trust this man to do his best work knowing he's baked as shit. However, if this dude was wasted, it's a little bit of a different story. Uh, alrighty, dude. All done. Yo, I, I asked for a rose, bro. <clears throat> And because of this reason, you would truly have to be a dumbass to go to school drunk. Chains, but the, the title of the video says going to school drunk. I did it, bro. I, I went to school drunk. But listen, it was no ordinary day at school. No. In fact, I didn't even go in the day at all. I went drunk to the school dance. Meaning this story takes place when the boys and I were in grade 11. It was a Thursday night, the night of winter ball. And as the boys and I were getting ready, you know, looking like some distinguished young gentleman, I had realized, damn, none of us have any girls to take to the dance. Fuck, you're right. That means we're gonna have to ask a girl to dance, bro. What? You mean you mean like 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 talk to them? Yeah. If only we knew someone with a bigger roster than a cheerleading team, S someone with more hoes than a shed, S someone who pulls more tens than EDP. It's Bob. So me and Billy started analyzing Bob. Like like how does he pull so many girls, bro? Is it the jawline? Uh, I, I I don't know. What about the silky smooth clear skin? Maybe. Or is it those succulent, luscious, kissable lips? It's the glasses. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the glasses. Yeah. So we stole Bob's entire flow in the hopes this would put an end to my drought of bitches. So we, we check ourselves out in the mirror and then we hop into Billy's whip. We throw on some Rihanna to get us hyped and before we knew it, we had arrived at school. Now to really paint the picture, it was a Thursday at 8 p.m. And on this Thursday at 8 p.m., Billy pops his trunk to pull out two bottles of vodka. Now, if you were unaware, it was currently a Thursday at 8 p.m. on a school night and we were headed into our school. Now logically, I, I should have simply denied the alcohol, but I'ma keep it a buck. The whole idea of walking up to a girl and asking her to dance was really giving me the heebie-jeebies. I mean, my palms were sweaty, my knees were weak, and arms were heavy, so I took a big old chug of that liquid courage in order to ease the nerves a little bit. And shit, Billy must have been feeling the same way because Billy was down in that shit like it was water. And right after we consumed enough alcohol to kill a baby elephant, I got a notification on my phone. Oh shit, I, I got an email. Oh, oh, it's from the school. 
It says, if you come to the winter ball under the influence of alcohol or any drug, you will face suspension and will lose your right to walk across the stage for graduation. <sighs> Fuck. Okay, listen, if we can get into the dance before this shit hits, we're chilling. All right, we got this. So we walk into the school looking fresh as hell, but then I notice a fat line of students, and this line led to a security check to get into the dance. Fuck, that, that, that's not good. No, no, no we're, we're chilling. I still don't even feel anything. What about you? Yeah, yeah same, same. We're, we're good, we're good. And just as we came to the consensus that we were good, the principal starts walking down the line in our direction. Fuck, act cool, act cool, we're, we're good, act cool. <laughs> that was close. You three, over here. Shit, fuck, fuck, shit. <sighs> Do you guys know why I called you over here? Mm -mm, nah. Nope. <clears throat> I smelled alcohol the moment I walked past you three. Now, I don't know if it was one of you or all of you, but you know the consequences of showing up under the influence, right? Yeah, yeah we do, yeah. we do. And tell me, is it or is it not suspicious that all three of you guys showed up with glasses on? Nah, it's not we suspicious. just thought it looked suspicious. Really? Mm -mm. Take them off. Damn, all yes, right. sir. And although I downed a sizable amount of vodka, it still hadn't kicked in yet. Now, I didn't want to do this to you guys, but look at my finger. This motherfucker starts waving around his magic finger in Billy's face with a flashlight to somehow see if he's drunk. Now, I don't know what the plan was, but I, I was fucking scared. Mmm, okay, he's not bad. Oh, okay, he's good. Now, let's see here. And just as this motherfucker puts his finger in my face, that vodka hits, bro. I'm using all the strength I got to keep my balance while I'm getting blinded by this flashlight. Hmm. L let me try that again. Huh. Uh, I got a little feeling you guys drank, but uh, it hasn't fully kicked in yet. I'll check up on you in a little yeah, bit. Yeah, th that's good. <laughs> yeah. So we get to security and they make sure to pat us down. Uh, a, a little bit too good. But before we knew it, we were at the dance. And just like that, I saw my opportunity and I put that liquid courage to use. And you know, I'm very articulate when it comes to words. So I ask, hi, uh, <laughs> how are you? <laughs> oh, hey, I'm good. So I, want, I wanted to ask you, uh, like, you, you know, we're at the dance and uh, <laughs> I saw you. So I walked over here. Uh, here we are. You know what I mean? So like, do you want, do you want to dance? <laughs> yeah, sure. It had worked. My plan had finally worked. And just as I was about to feel the female touch I'd been deprived of for all these years, I see Mr. Principal walking in my direction with his finger ready and his flashlight in hand. So I just haul ass and I don't stop hauling ass until I'm off school grounds. So the moral of the story is don't go to school drunk, bro. Imagine putting in a hard work, time, and dedication into saving up for some new shoes. You go to Foot Locker and find the perfect pair. You try them on, you check them out, and you cop them. And even though you spent your last $200 on these shoes, you're happy because you feel fresh as fuck and these J's might actually get you some bitches. But as you're leaving the mall, a gang of motherfuckers wearing shysties take those J's right off your feet, leaving you shoeless, broke, depressed, and with absolutely zero bitches. Now, personally, I wouldn't let that slide. However, when I was just a young, wholesome boy in seventh grade, I still wouldn't have let that slide. But I was weak as shit, so uh, it would have slid anyway. I mean, in seventh grade, I could have got my ass beat by Hezbollah, bruh. I was a walking lick, which is exactly why I got a story for y'all today. So as I said, this story takes place in seventh grade, where I was young, innocent, and 
built like a string bean, bro. So one Friday night, me, Bob, and Billy were going to this girl's house for the three-man mission. The plan was simple. There was three of us and three of them. We would put on a scary movie and if everything went to plan, we would get some cheeks. Now just earlier that day, I had copped some fresh ass Jordan. So I've got a little confidence boost as we walk up to this girl's house. So we knock on the door, they open it, and we go inside. Now we stuck to the plan. We put on some cheesy horror movie and one thing led to another and by the end of the movie, Bob had all three girls, bro, and me and Billy were in the corner playing Bloons Tower Defense. Don't ask me how this shit happened, I don't want to talk about it. So after hours of me and Billy straight fumbling, we all decide to go home. And although I was a little disappointed in my performance tonight, I put on my brand new uncreased Jordans and I remembered, damn. Even curry airballs sometimes. Now the bus route back to Bob's crib took two buses. So we hop on the first bus, it takes us to the next stop, and as we're getting off, we see the second bus we need drive right by us. Fuck, is that our bus? Damn, yeah it is. Well, uh, check when the next one comes. Yeah, it shouldn't be long. Damn, bro, the next bus comes in an hour. So we have no choice but to wait at the bus stop for an hour. So we wait and wait, and at this point, it's already getting late. I checked the time, and it's already 11 p.m. As we were sitting there, bored as hell, waiting for this bus to come, one of the other buses stops in front of us to let someone off. The person gets off, and as the bus starts leaving, we hear this loud thud come from the bus. What the hell? What was that? Oh. Oh shit, it's a baton. And as we're analyzing this baton that seems to have fallen out of the sky, some motherfucker wearing a shiesty walks up to Billy like, give me that shit, and straight snatched the baton out of Billy's hands. And Billy froze up, bro was scared shitless, straight bamboozled. And the way the bus stop was set up was there was a main road, the bus stop, and behind the bus stop was a small hill with bushes on top. And when I say this shit looked like something out of a movie, I mean this dude wearing a shiesty walks back up to the top of the hill and a group of five other dudes walk out from behind the bush and they're shiestied up too bro. They had to have been in at least grade 12. and. To a 7th grader, that is scary as fuck. And I was no genius, but as that group of shysties came out of the bushes looking like a GTA 5 cutscene, I came to the consensus that they were up to no good. Yo, 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 those Jordans are looking my size. And this, this was the moment I realized I was about to get my shit robbed. So I started analyzing my surroundings and calculating my options. Maybe I can talk my way out of this. <clears throat> uh, hey sir, uh, how was your day today? Shut up. I said, what size are the shoes? Damn, I, I can't fight them. It's a three on five and they got the high ground and they got a baton, bro. They would knock my ass out and take the shoes. But, 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 but I'm fast. So, so if I take a right, then make a left, there's no way they can catch me. Wait, fuck, I can't run. I I'd crease my Jordans. And just as I had ran out of options, Billy says the last words I would expect to come out of this man's mouth. Wait, 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 Ethan? Yo, who the fuck? Oh, oh shit, Billy. Oh, I didn't know it was you, bro. Man, Ethan, you had me scared for a second. Damn, man. my bad, pimp, my bad, yeah, my bad. Yeah, no, no, you're good, you're good. How, how's your mom oh, doing? Oh, yeah, she's doing good. Yeah, it's great to see you, Yeah, man. you too, bro. See you around. All right, peace out. Yo, don't worry. I seen, I seen a kid over there with some new forces we could snatch. Oh, bet, yes, sir. I Dibs. bet, I bet. Man, he's a good dude. Nah, nah bro. He, he just tried to rob me. Who the, who the fuck was that? Oh, th that's my longtime homie, Ethan. Wh why do you know him? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we went to the same preschool. S same preschool? Th that dude looks 20, bruh. Oh, yeah, no, he, he is. He, he just got held back a few times. H held, ba held back in preschool? How the fuck do you get held back in preschool? Oh, he, he used to beat up the other kids and then take their toys. Oh, oh shit. Makes sense. So we bust back to Bob's crib, and as we're walking to Bob's front door, I stepped in mud. Bruh. Yo, Chains, I I'll pay you five bucks if you pull that fire alarm right there. Oh, Yo, run, 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 run. Chains, 
Do you know why I've called you into my office today? <laughs> no. You see, that little stunt you pulled has led you to a one-week suspension. God damn it. W what does suspension mean? It means for the next week, you are prohibited from coming to school. Fuck. W what does prohibited mean? Chains. You can't come to school for the next week. Hold up, so you're telling me because I pulled the fire alarm, I don't have to go to school for a week? Yes, it's a suspension. You are... Man, I got a love-hate relationship when it comes to getting suspended from school. Like on one hand, shit, you, you just don't have to go to school. But, but on the other hand... Suspended? Oh, I'm about to suspend that ass. Ah, fuck. Ow. Shit. <coughs> I, all right, I don't recommend getting suspended. That shit is not worth it. But how do I know? This story dates way, way, way back to grade seven. It was a cold winter day at Stickman Middle School. In fact, it was freezing cold, and this gave Billy a great idea. Yo, the pond behind the school is frozen. L let's go fuck around on it. Oh, I'm down. Okay, bet. So after school, we got a group of five homies, and we headed over to the frozen pond. Now, to paint the picture, behind Stickman Middle School was Stickman Elementary School, and behind Stickman Elementary School was this frozen pond, meaning we had to walk through Stickman Elementary School to get to this pond. But nonetheless, we walk up to the pond and instantly I see this big red sign that says, Hazard, do not step on ice. Guys, the, the sign says do not step on ice. Man, I what the sign? W watch this. Oh shit, look, it's sturdy as fuck. Yo, yo. <laughs> fuck. And even though Billy's dumbass fell in, the ice was actually pretty sturdy. So, you know, we're gliding around, eating shit, hitting the meanest ballerina spins you've ever seen, and, and, and eating shit. And we were having some good old harmless fun. In fact, our grade seven selves were having the time of our lives on this frozen water that is until. <clears throat> Oh, what do you guys think you're doing? Uh, we were just just walking on the ice. Mm, did you guys not see the sign? What uh, what what sign? I I could have swore I, I put a sign right here. Nope, no, no sign there, at all. There was no sign. Yeah. I have no clue what you're talking about. Uh, okay, but but you guys have to get off the ice. Well, well, why? N nobody's getting hurt. Yeah, we're safe. Okay, it's your choice. You're gonna regret this. So we continued with our ice skating antics for approximately 10 more minutes. Until the same lady came back up to the pond, but this time she was equipped with a Sony Alpha A7 mirrorless digital camera with the Extendo lens. In other words, she was quite literally about to catch us in 4K. But but at least she doesn't know what school we go to. Hey, uh, what school do you guys go to? Not Stickman Middle School. Absolutely not. No, definitely not. Fuck, she knows. We had to think quick. How are we going to smoothly get out of this situation without getting in trouble so we called a boys emergency meeting we huddled up and discussed our best plans to get out of this situation and after combining all of our genius grade 7 brains we made the ultimate plan. If we started mooning the camera it would then be illegal for her to take pictures of our middle school cheeks. I don't know how this became our best option, but regardless, we put the plan in motion. I mean, me personally, I got a little shy and kept my pants up, but some of the boys were out there going crazy, looking more caked up than Summer Rae. And after a little while, the lady must have decided it wasn't a great look to have a camera pointed at some 12-year-old cheeks, and she left. Which means the plan had worked flawlessly. Now the next day at school, I had completely forgot about it to be honest. But strangely enough, while I was sitting in math class, I hear the little class phone start ringing. Uh, hello? Oh yes, he's here. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll send him your way. Thank you. Uh, Chains, Mr. Principal wants to talk to you. And at this point, I should have picked up on why I was being called to the office, but I had complete faith in our foolproof plan of mooning this stranger that the thought of being in trouble didn't even cross my mind. That was until I walked into the office to see every single one of the boys sitting in Mr. Principal's office. But mama didn't raise a snitch, so we started capping our asses off. So, uh, what did you guys do after school yesterday? Mm, not nothing. I, I, I played Fortnite. I, I, I was doing a homework. Mm, don't play stupid with me. I got a call from Mrs. Principal over at Stickman Elementary. So tell me. 
What were you doing on the pond yesterday? I, I, I wasn't there. It wasn't us. I, I don't know what you're talking I, about. I don't even know what a pond is. I see. Well, I've got evidence. And as he shows us this undeniable evidence, you can see this dude Billy's cheeks in the corner of one of the pictures. So I slowly look over at Billy and he looks over at me. <laughs> if you don't stop laughing right now, you're all suspended. That's it. You're all suspended. And as I explained the situation to my mom, let's, let's just say Mama Chains was not happy. Getting baked is usually an exceptional experience that consists of eating food, laughing, questioning your entire existence, eating food, watching Netflix while eating more food. And you know, that's great and all, but every once in a while, that Zaza can take you to the deepest, darkest depths of the shadow realm. And trust me, that shit is not fun. So I wake up on a sunny Saturday afternoon at 1 p.m. You know, a respectable sleep in. I hop in the shower. It was a good shower. I checked the Clash of Clans base. I didn't even get raided. I eat some scrambled eggs and toast. Shit was scrumptious. And all of these things led me to believe, damn. Today's gonna be a good ass day. But little did I know, today would be the day I would look death in the eyes and fight for my life. So I finish my scrambled eggs and I pull up the boys group chat and I'm like, what's the move? And Bob's like, I don't know, let me check. So I'm like, okay, bet. There's no moves, bro. And because there was nothing to do, the boys and I would have no choice but to reside to the default move. Let's just smoke. Bet. Calm down. So the default move always takes place at the boys' home base. Bob's oh, crib. Right, right, now, right. Bob's crib was the spot to be baked for many valid reasons. First of all, bro's basement was simply comfy as fuck. Couches on lock, blankets always ready with infinite pillows. And Bob's dog, Walter, was the fucking goat but most importantly bob's cupboard was always stacked i mean this cupboard has enough food to feed a village this cupboard has more snacks than 7-eleven and this cupboard had enough calories to be in a nikocado avocado video and that shit was perfect because god damn when i get baked i become a certified fat ass so you know the drill we roll up and got a joint in rotation. And honestly, I don't know what got into me this night because I was absolutely reefing that hoe. Yo, chill. God damn. Fuck it. Let's roll another one. So we rolled up another J and I just simply could not be stopped. And I specifically remember asking, how high can I really get? And after about 30 minutes of me going bananas on these joints, I found the answer to my question. Pretty fucking high. I mean, I was beyond zooted. Like at that point, time was literally in slow motion. And it was one of those highs when your senses become extra sensitive. So I was just posted up in a blankie while munching on some pizza pops. And I was truly invested in those pizza pops. I mean, in that moment, I, th I thought I was the pizza pop, bro. But once I finished the pizza pops, we all decided it would be a good idea to go for a walk. However, the moment I stood up, I, I started feeling peculiar. But regardless, we went outside and at this point, it was already dark. Because in the time we were smoking at Bob's crib, the sunny Saturday turned into a very cloudy, dark, and cold Saturday night. So Billy and Bob are walking towards this creepy looking forest and I'm like, alright, I, I think I'm too high to go into this forest, bro. Nah, don't worry. I I've been in this forest a million times. I know it like the back of my hand. Alright then. And as soon as we step into the forest, I start hearing shit, bro. Yo, did, 
did did you hear that? He, hear what? It, it it sounds like it sounds like someone's in the bushes. <laughs> nah, you're just baked as shit. <laughs> <laughs> So we continue walking for about five minutes and out of nowhere it starts pouring and this was really the point where everything shifted because i was far too faded to be out in a dark cold rainy forest so i'm like all right let's just go back to bob's yeah facts I, I didn't know it was gonna be raining but as we're walking back through the forest i can undoubtedly hear something in the bushes Okay, what the fuck was that? Oh shit, run! Oh hell nah! Bob and Billy start hauling ass, and scared as hell, I slowly turn around to see a fucking demon coyote pack looking at me like I'm lunch, bro. And this had to be because of the second joint, but for a moment, I looked this coyote dead in the eyes. And, and I, I saw a death. I saw a death, bro. And in that moment, I gathered all the functioning brain cells I had left to just run. And I couldn't see where I was going. I was just hauling ass. And when I looked back, all I could see was the devious coyote eyeballs staring into my soul. And the next thing I knew, I, I stepped in a pothole and my trajectory completely changed from running away to eating shit, bro. And when I say falling felt like it was in slow motion, I mean I had to have been falling for 5 minutes. But once my face made contact with the ground, th this is how I went out. I, I was about to get packed up by a pack of coyotes. As they approached, I was saying my goodbyes. But out of nowhere, I hear something in the distance. This motherfucker Bob drop kicks a coyote in the face. And it had to have been that Zaza that made these coyotes look so devious because after Bob socked that jit in the face, they weren't so scary. I mean, they all just ran away and dispersed. They had me like, yeah, and, and don't come back. Bitch. So we walk back to Billy's crib and I'm still tweaking off those joints. I'm like checking behind me, checking beside me, checking the sky to make sure no evil crows pick me up and kidnap me. But we get back to Bob's crib and I sit down on the couch. And just as I finally felt relieved, I get jump scared by Walter. Bro pretty much gave me a heart attack. I thought the coyotes had invaded Bob's crib to come and kill me. But it was just good old Walter coming to chill with the boys. So I got some more pizza pops and we lived happily ever after. My first time eating magic mushrooms. Now this story takes place on a spooky Halloween night. And of course, when you're young, Halloween is about dressing up and getting candy from strangers. But as you get older, you grow to realize the true meaning of Halloween is to commit as many devious and malicious crimes in one night as humanly possible. Like when me and my homies first transformed from some young, innocent gentlemen into some unethical and deceitful delinquents, we planned out some criminal activities for our first teenager Halloween. Yo, trick or treating is for nerds. We're, we're gonna drink alcohol and smoke grass. Woo. Yeah. That is so teenager. So, you know, we, we drink their drink and we, we smoke their grass. Man, I sure could fuck up some Reese's Pieces right now. Not gonna lie, some Skittles would be fire. Alright, fuck it. So we threw on last year's Halloween drip and shamelessly went trick-or-treating baked as fuck. Trick-or-treat. Aren't you guys a little bit old to be trick-or-treating? No. But we got our candy and we went back to Billy's crib and the munchies took over. I mean, we fucked that shit up so fast that we changed costumes and we spun the block. Tr trick, or trick, or tr tr trick or treat. Oh, uh, di didn't you guys already come here? N no. There's a snake in my boot. So all Halloween, me and the gang pretty much just ate chocolate. 
But by the time next year rolled around, okay, this Halloween is going to be the best Halloween yet. But, but how can we top last year? Yeah, we, we already smoked grass and ingested alcohol well underaged. Because I got these. <gasps> This dude, Billy, whips out a handful of shrooms. And honestly, Billy didn't even need to convince us because me and Bob were trying to have the best Halloween ever. So we split it up and we all down a sizable amount of magic mushrooms for our first time. And let me tell you, there are many smooth ways to consume some magic mushrooms. One being the pizza technique as well as the good old PB and Shroom Sammy. However, we had smoked and we had drank before, but magic mushrooms were completely out of our expertise. So we just choked them shits down raw. And it was strange. It, it tasted like I just ate earth if, if earth was dry as fuck and like chewy. But about 20 minutes after eating the shrooms, Billy has a genius idea. Okay, hear me out. We go trick-or-treating, collect some candy real quick, and come back. So when these mushrooms hit, we can be eating good. Okay. Wait, then, then we need some costumes. Okay, I, I do have three costumes. But, but like, just don't ask any questions, okay? Why do you have no questions, bro? Now let's go get this bag of, of, of candy. So we're mobbing around the neighborhood in some gangster Teletubby suits. And we roll up to the first house like... Trick or, trick or treat. Trick or treat. Aw, oh, you guys are so cute. And we were banging out house after house. But after about four houses, I started to notice my Teletubby mitts were looking a little suspicious. But I didn't have time to think about the psychedelics that were potentially invading my brain because I had bigger priorities. Go cop some Halloween candy. Trick or treat. Trick or treat. Trick, trick or treat. But as we walked up to the eighth house, I was undeniably tripping balls. Cause as I looked up at Bob, I just started uncontrollably laughing my ass off. And Bob shrooms must have kicked in too because we were both just hysterically laughing at each other for no reason. But then the door opened and I saw this tall ass bald dude with an unconceivably large smile on his face. I mean, the shrooms made it look like his smile was just unproportionately big and I, I just assumed it was a Halloween mask. <laughs> Man, I, I love your Halloween costume. <laughs> what costume? Oh, holy shit. <laughs> we need to get home ASAP. So we're making our way back home, tripping balls in our Teletubby costumes, and I'm just seeing the stars falling out of the sky. Then out of nowhere, Billy yells, What the fuck is that? Uh, uh shit. I I'm probably just tripping, but it, it looks like zombies running towards us at, at full speed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it too. Oh shit, we gotta run. So me, Billy, and Bob start booking it back to Billy's house. And I am hauling ass because there is no way I'm getting packed up by some zombies right now. And when I look back, I don't see some zombie costume. No, I see some real ass zombies. Like bones sticking out, eyeballs look like they haven't blinked in centuries, and that shit just made me run faster. Cause to me, this was a life or death situation. I mean, in reality, it probably just looked like... Ah! 360 We get back to Billy's crib. Holy shit, get in, get in! Lock it, lock it, lock it! And we were not taking any chances. I mean, we barricaded every single door in the entire house. And for a second, it was a horrible trip. I mean, I thought I was in the zombie apocalypse. But once we settled down, we were having the time of our lives, chilling and eating candy while tripping balls. Oh 
booga booga! If you saw this video, you would know my mom has caught me lacking baked beyond belief before. And after that experience, I really changed my ways. I mean, I was grounded for over a year. So in that time, I decided to get my life together. I started working out, eating healthy, getting straight A's in school. Okay, that's cap, but straight B's in school. Okay, okay, B's and C's, but that, that's besides the point. The point is, I got my ass beat for coming home zooted, and I never smoked again. Until I did. <laughs> so, this incident takes place with the man, the myth, the legend, Bob. So me, Billy, and Bob are chilling at Bob's crib when Bob says the holy words. Are you guys trying to smoke? Yeah, bet. And keep in mind, the rest of my homies had been smoking regularly. But your boy was fresh out of the slammer. I mean, I was pretty much on probation at this point. And on top of that, I hadn't smoked for over a year, so my tolerance had gone to shit. So with all that being said, the smart decision was to simply not smoke. But shit, if you know me, I am not one for smart decisions. In fact, I was one for stupid decisions. So I was out here hitting this hoe like Chris Breezy. I was puffing this joint like Wiz Khalifa. When honestly, I should have been patient and just taking my time because... Who knows what my tolerance was at this point. So when it starts hitting me, it hits hard. But the homies were closely monitoring me because they knew if I got caught high again, well on probation, I would be serving 20 to life. So they're out here checking my eyes, checking my heart rate, checking my pulse. And the diagnostic was, I think you're chilling, bro. But progressively, I was getting higher and higher. So as we're there watching the most goaded cartoon, the amazing world of gumball, I, I start floating. And I don't know if anyone else has experienced this before, but sometimes when you get mad high, you just forget that you even exist. And you use 107% of your brain power to just think. So I was out here floating away, thinking about some random bullshit. Yo, it's, it's crazy that everyone in the world is either named Quandale or they're not. Wait, what if I'm in a simulation? No, no, no. What if I'm in an animation? Being drawn by some dude on his computer for a platform of entertainment. And a bunch of people know what I'm thinking right now. Hold up. Is a tomato a vegetable or a fruit? But I'm brought back to earth by a text message. Oh, man. Uh, mom. Please come home for dinner at 6. Damn, I, I gotta be home for dinner at 6. Oh shit, what time is it? Uh, it's 5.30. Nah, we can't let your mom find out you're cooked. So Bob whips out his emergency, hide how baked you are, kit. Boom, hits me with the eye drops to make my eyes less red douses me in cologne to cover up the smell, and apparently eating oranges also help slow down your high. So I leave Bob's crib and as I'm walking home, I'm brainstorming all the possible scenarios. Either I play this off like a smooth criminal and nobody ever finds out, or I could get caught and I could get sentenced to 30 years. So as I walk up to my front door, my entire future is dependent on how I play this shit off. I take a deep breath and I ring the doorbell. And my, my brother opens the door. The door was unlocked, dumbass. Fuck, I'm off to a bad start. So I walk into the kitchen, casual as hell. Oh, Chains, how was your day? Oh, it was good. How was yours? Yeah, good shit. We're doing good. Oh, it was good. Thanks for asking. Wow, mom. This mac and cheese looks succulent. Fuck, why did I say that? Who, who the fuck says succulent? Oh, why thank you, I switched the recipe up a little bit. Just be casual, be casual. Mmm, <laughs> the mac and cheese, it's, it's good. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, what were you guys doing at Bob's? Fuck, what do I say, what do I say? P a t twister. Oh, a, a twister? Yep, y yep, twi twister. What, wasn't it just you, Bob, and Billy? Uh, yep, just a good old game of Twister with the boys. Damn, y'all are gay as hell. 
Yep. <clears throat> not 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 to not to being gay as hell. I just I just meant yup in general. Like you know like uh yup yeah. chains are are you feeling okay? Oh, oh fuck. She she knows. What well, what do I do? A little word of advice. Whenever you're in one of these situations, just cap and say you're tired. Like it works for everything. Are you high? No, I'm just tired. Damn, bro. Are, are you depressed? Mm, no. I'm just tired. Help! Help! I I'm drowning! Ugh. No, no, I'm just tired. So while I was backed into a corner, I was pretty much on trial facing life. I just used the good old. No, I I'm just really tired. I, I couldn't get much sleep last night. I actually, I think, I think I could even take a nap right now. But thank you very much for dinner. And call me Michael Jackson, cause your boy was a certified smooth criminal. And I moonwalked my high ass all the way into a nap. And god damn, that nap hit. Listen, I am no criminal. In fact, I would consider myself a good Samaritan. Type of dude who helps grandmas cross the street. Type of dude who might even pick up some trash now and then. And absolutely not the type of dude to go to jail. Now, I know for a fact I would never go to jail. Not, not because I never break the law, but because I'm fast as fuck. In the streets, they used to call me Usain Jr., bro. So there was no way you would catch me getting arrested by some 50-year-old man with a beer belly and a donut in his hand. I would be out here crossing, bro, up. Hit him with a little body faint, leave him in the ER, bro. But with that being said, I needed that speed. I needed that speed to get out of all the dumbass situations I put myself in. Cause I'm still no valedictorian, but back in grade 9, I was nominated stupidest dumbass, and all the runner-ups were my homies. So evidently we had some stupid ass ideas. Like I remember this one time we were all looking for something to do, and if you're from a small boring city like mine, you would know there's not many fun things to do besides smoke and break the law. So what did we do? We, we smoked? And, th and then we broke the law. This story takes place at Billy's crib. So it's just me, Billy, and Bob. We're chilling playing PlayStation or whatever. And Billy's like, damn, I I'm bored as hell. We should go do something. Yeah, facts. What's something fun we could do? Shit, we could have some girls over. We got no hoes, bruh. Holeless. Shit, I forgot about that. I mean, we could get some food. You got money? You're broke, bitch. Damn, damn, you're right. Wait, wait, we could smoke. You got grass? Yeah, yeah, I, I do actually. Oh, oh shit, bet. So we all go outside, roll up the grass, and get baked. Then we go back inside and hop back on the PlayStation. Damn, I'm low-key still bored. Yeah, let's have some girls- You still have no hoes, bro. Fuck. I mean, we could have a bonfire. Oh shit, that's Ooh, not a bad idea. Genius. So you think this is a good place? Nah, it's too out in the open. What about here? Nah, it's too close to the school. What about here? Oh shit, th this is kind of nice. So we were looking around, we gathered up the best sticks to build the fire, and we set them up quite nicely. We lathered those bad boys in some gasoline, and apparently my high ass didn't know how fire and gas worked. So I leaned over the fire, and when I go to light it, for a second my life flashed before my eyes. So I quickly jumped back, but my friends and I are baked to perfection. So they're like, yo, dude, are, are you good? Yeah, man, I think so. Are my eyebrows still there? Uh, you, you never had eyebrows. Oh, okay. So we're all just staring at the fire in silence, thinking about random things. Damn, I need me a four-piece Popeye's combo right now. The, the meaning of life, it, it must be to evolve and become the best person you can be. God damn. Bob's mom is so hot. And as we're just chilling, watching the fire, it was pretty much sending out a smoke signal and anyone in the vicinity probably saw it. And soon we started hearing a siren in the distance. Guys, it's definitely just an ambulance. I mean, I mean, it's getting kind of loud, don't you think? No, 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 we're chilling, we're chilling. Fuck bro, I'm out of here. Yeah, I'm way too high for this right now. So Billy and Bob just leave and I'm thinking, they're just being some scaredy cats. They're gonna come back. It's literally just an ambulance. R right? Man, it's getting kinda close. Oh shit, they're definitely coming for me. 
And then the siren just stops. Oh, I guess they're not coming for me. And then I look behind me and I make direct eye contact with two officers. My heart literally stopped. Oh, you're fucked. Hey! I grabbed the gas and the gas, and with all the adrenaline I had, I literally jumped on the fire, stomped it out, and hauled ass. Hey, get back here! I'm being chased by these two cops, and I am red-handed as fuck. I mean, I'm holding a liter of gasoline, a lighter, and the kush while I'm baked as hell, running from these cops. And they were on my ass, bro, because let's be real, I could have outrun these fat asses any day of the week, but I'm at a major disadvantage here. Like, I have to run carrying the can of gas while I'm zooted, bro. So sheer speed was not gonna do it, but I had to get them off my tail, or, or else I was going to jail. So I take a sharp right, and then I'm faced with these two paths. I hit a quick left, and as soon as I get out of their sight, I slide into these bushes smooth as butter. And I was scared shitless. Man, man I, can't, I can't go to jail. I, I, dro I dropped the soap way too much for all that. Holy shit, they're right there. Where'd he go? Mm, we almost had him. And we would have had him too if your fat ass didn't eat so many damn donuts. Shut up, Robert. That's why Dave fucked your wife. As soon as it was clear, I booked it straight to Billy's house. Oh, guys, it, it wasn't an ambulance. No shit. And I think it's safe to say I was paranoid for the rest of the night. Yo, I really appreciate you guys. So I'm going to be following back a bunch of people on my Instagram. So go check it out. Peace. So as I mentioned in my fast food video, I worked at a place called Jim Jortons. N not to be confused with the popular Canadian establishment, Tim Hortons. With that being said, at the time I had already worked at Jimmy's for a year. And to be fair, I couldn't care less if I got fired. So one day I got booked for a night shift from 6 p.m. to 12 a.m. <laughs> But that wasn't gonna stop me and the boys from smoking up beforehand. So we're all chilling at Bob's crib and we all take a hit. We all eat some snacks. Listen, you know the drill. But then Bob asked, are you guys trying to watch some TV? Mm, nah, I I'm really just trying to fuck up these Doritos. Y yeah, yeah, I, I could watch something. So Bob throws on the first thing that comes up. And I'm thinking, pfft. These nerds are trying to watch Dora. But literally five minutes later. Do you see Swiper the yeah, Fox? Yeah, he's, he's in the bush. Yeah, you see him. Where? What, in the bush. I don't see him. He, he's right there. Where? Right behind you. Right behind you. Yes. Swiper, no. no. Swipe. Oh, what? oh hell no. All of a sudden, I was invested. This show had me in a trance. We were banging out episode after episode. And when I go to check my phone, it's already 5.59. So I'm like, oh, oh shit. I, I got work in one minute. So I run to my car. I wouldn't drive. No. N not because I'm baked as shit. I was just broke, bruh. I didn't have a car. I was working at Jim Jordan's. So I haul my ass over to the bus stop. Then I, I wait there as fast as I can. I get on the bus. Then I get off the bus. Then eventually, I make it to Jim Jordan's. Needless to say, I was late as hell. And of course, my manager had something to say about it. But shit, I was higher than gas prices right now, man. You can't be coming in late like this. Yeah, yeah. Jonathan had to stay an extra 30 uh, minutes to cover you. It is very yeah, for unprofessional sure, for sure. so late. Are you even listening? Yeah, uh-huh. What did I say then? For sure, for sure. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. She definitely knew I was high as hell. But she couldn't fire me. Because honestly, nobody else wanted to work there. So I throw on the gym drip, hop on the drive through window. And I'm the type of dude whose brain just disintegrates when I'm high. So I was just chilling, you know, doing my thing. But all of a sudden, some guy comes through the drive through and tries to kill my vibe. Uh, sir. Sir, hello. Do, do you have my food? Uh, yeah, what do you, what do you want? Well, well, well I, I just ordered some food back there and I, I... Bro, what do you think this is? McDonald's? Yeah, I'm gonna keep it a stack. Most of my brain cells were still at Bob's crib watching Dora. And I guess one of my coworkers noticed that. Yeah, you should just make the drinks. I'll be on drive-thru. Okay. Even though I didn't have to talk to people anymore, my brain still refused to start braining. Yo, Chains, chill. Wait, what? Looking back, I am really sorry for whoever ordered something that night. Because I wasn't even reading the orders. I was out here freestyling with the coffee. A little bit of this. Oh, yep, a little bit of that. Whole lot of this. Is this the black coffee? What is this, the black coffee? Uh, yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep.
Then I went on my break. All right, Chains, what do you want? Uh, well, what do you guys have? Bro, you work here. Can I get, uh, everything? Oh, uh, everything bagel? No, no, no. Just everything. Jim Jordan's never hit so hard in my life. I was an hour into my 30 minute break demolishing a meal for five. Honestly, that day, I was probably one of the worst employees ever. But shit, I was having the time of my life. Wicka wicka. Until some Debbie Downer tried to kill my positive vibes. Hey, who made this coffee? Uh, that'd be me. I asked for a black coffee and got a cup full of sugar and cream. Are you sure you didn't order that? And boom, she went off. I can't believe this. This is a disgrace. This is outright disrespectful. Let me talk to your manager right now. And listen, I know not everyone's brain just disconnects when they get high. But for those of you who are anything like me, don't go to work high. If you want to keep your job. Wicka wicka. Listen, most of us have been high before, and most of us have also been drunk before, but it truly takes one determined, perseverant, curious, and brave dumbass to be high and drunk at the same time. Which perfectly describes your boy way, way, way back in grade 7. See, this story is crazy because I had never been high or drunk before this incident. And all at once, I turned from just a young, innocent boy into the low IQ human I am today. So, it was grade 7 and my school had just got out for spring break. The boys and I had already planned out a little get together for one of our friend's birthdays. So after school, me and the boys link up. We go and clean up our friend Billy's house, cause you can't throw a birthday function in a dirty house. And it was dirty bro. So by the time we were done cleaning, it was already about 7.30. So that meant everyone started to show up. So the boys and I started doing your average middle school activities. By that, I mean we're wrestling, we're breaking stuff. And the girls were just posted on the couch. Cause pff, what are we supposed to do, talk to them? Hell nah. But eventually we got tired of throwing each other around. So we're all sweaty and shit and we sit down on the couch, leaving at least one and a half meters between us and the girls, of course. And we, we just sat there. <clears throat> but then out of nowhere, Billy's like, I got a brownie. And I'm over here thinking, the fuck? The hoes don't care about your brownie, bruh. But then Billy started to elaborate. Guys, this is no ordinary brownie. I stole it from my uncle's do not eat cabinet. And he says they're magical. Oh, he probably means they're magically tasty. I need a bite of that. Does anyone want a piece? Yeah, I'll try one. Yeah, sure, I want I some. mean, I am kind of yes, hungry. Yes, please. So everyone has their piece, and they're kind of building up the suspense. Like, are you guys ready? Are you sure we should do this? And I'm still clueless. I'm over here thinking, it's a brownie. What's the big deal? The fuck? This brownie isn't magical. This shit tastes like ass. Oh, Chains, how do you feel? I feel like I just ate some dog shit, bruh. I'm gonna keep it a stack. Your uncle needs a new baker for real. No, Chains, it's not about the taste. They're grass-infused brownies. They're supposed to get you high. Man, what? I feel like this is the kind of thing you're supposed to say before I downed it. So everyone eats their piece of brownie and then continues to sit in awkward silence for like the next two hours. But then the brownie starts to hit. People are dropping like flies. And eventually, everyone felt it except me. And they're just doing high stuff, like eating all the food in the kitchen, watching Netflix documentaries. But for me, the brownie still hasn't hit. And Billy notices that I'm sober, and he's like, wait here. Bro goes into his mom's liquor cupboard and pours out unholy amounts of vodka and just hands me the cup. Keep in mind, I had never drank before, so I have no clue whether or not this is a lot. So I literally chugged the whole thing. Looking back, it had to have been at least five shots all at once. But man, I had no clue. So I'm, I'm just sitting there chilling on the couch, waiting for something magical to happen. And I start to think, maybe I'm just invincible. Like, like nothing can affect me. It all hit at once. The brownie and the vodka was out here running combos on me like John Cena and Randy Orton. And bro, something in that brownie changed my settings and enabled third person perspective. It was the weirdest feeling. It was like I was watching myself on a movie, but like, like I was, 
in the movie bro i don't know and apparently it also gave me the ability to teleport because i swear when i blinked i teleported from billy's crib to the front of a mcdonald's line and listen i have no clue what happened in between that time but i had no business being in a public setting right now hi what can i get for you uh uh sir can i can i help you yeah uh what what can i get for you listen because i was high drunk and apparently had no social capabilities i was spitting some nonsense to this poor mcdonald's employee yeah uh do, do y'all got the the popeye's chicken sandwich uh sir this is mcdonald's yeah yeah and let me get that dairy queen blizzard dairy queen what and uh uh what what kind of nachos do you guys have i blinked again and we were all back at billy's house the very last thing i remember from that night is there was absolutely no blankets. So I was out here using literally anything I could find for a little bit of warmth. But eventually, after a long night, I passed out. Listen, I know some of y'all have already gone to school high, but for those of you who haven't, don't do it, bro. I only went to school baked one time in my life, and after that experience, I never did it again. So, this story takes place on your average Wednesday. I was still in grade 10 at this point, but I have to note, I was not a super experienced smoker. However, with that being said, I did have some homies in grade 11 that let's just say they knew what they were doing. But still, my day started off like your average high schooler. Alarm goes off, hit snooze for 15 minutes, get up, stare at the wall for approximately 10 minutes, shower, eat, and head to school. This particular day, I remember being a little bit anxious because I knew I had to present my speech that I had just written the night before. But pff, English is at the end of the day, I'm chilling for now. Plus, my first class is PE. So you know how it goes. I smoked some kids in dodgeball. I went to my next class, got smoked in math. The bell rings and I dip for lunch. Guys, See y'all boys. Guys, the, yeah, the yeah, peace out, man. I, I do. So I link up with the gang for lunch, and we kind of mob around the school for a minute, but we end up just chilling in this forest right outside our school. And this is when one of my experienced friends whips out that Zaza. We'll just call him Jimmy for now. Jimmy just asks everyone, are you dudes trying to smoke? Yeah, for sure. Hell yup. Nah, I'm, I'm all good. At first, I was the only person who didn't want to. But as I sat there, feeling the vibes, in taking the positive energy from the surrounding vegetation, I came to the conclusion the vibes were right. It was just me and my trusted homies secluded in a peaceful area. I mean, what's the worst that could happen, right? And man, when it comes to drinking, I'm a certified heavyweight champion. But for whatever reason, when it came to smoking, I had the tolerance of a newborn baby. But then again, what would I look like taking this lil ass in hell? So I did what any dumbass individual would do. Yo, look at Chains. Yo, chill, dude. <coughs> Damn. So my friends are low key hyping me up. And I'm out here thinking, I am such a cool guy. I am, I am literally that guy. I'm literally that guy. But much like everything else, everyone forgot about it in five minutes. But I'm still left with all this tetrahydrocannabinol compounds waiting to alter my neural chemistry. So as we're walking back to the school, the THC raids my brain like the FBI. FBI open up! And I just eat the ground, bro. Had me looking like my controller just disconnected. And my friends just look at each other like, fuck, maybe you should just go home, bro. Yeah, dude, there's no way you'll be able to go to class like this. So we make our way over to this bench outside and I'm weighing out my options. I'm trying to find the best scenario to get out of this alive. I narrowed it down to roughly two options. I can either go home, get whooped by my mom, and get grounded for another year and a half, or I could thug it out, just go to class, running the risk that my teacher might find out I'm baked. So me and my friends are brainstorming, using the good old pros and cons method, going home. Pros. Cons. I will get whooped. Staying at school. Pros. Cons. I might get whooped. Staying at school it is. The bell rings, my friends wish me good luck, but my next class was science, and I had the number one homie in that class. Bob. So Bob is just being a W man's. He's absolutely carrying me in this group science experiment while I'm literally passed out sleeping on the desk. Bell rings, 
Bob wishes me good luck and dips. Now I'm all on my own, but I just got one more class. I'm almost done. What class do I even have again? Oh, oh yeah, English, right? So I make my way to English. I sit down. All right, so today we're doing our speeches. Speeches? And my English teacher was the type of teacher who loves to catch people lacking and just put them on the spot. So of course, he sees me on another planet and decides to call me out. Uh, Chains, uh, how about you go first? Uh, I'm not, I'm not prepared. Just get up there, bud. Uh, okay. All right, whenever you're ready. <clears throat> Ch Chains, you, you can start now. Uh, okay. So, so my, my speech, it, like, it's about... The, the topic of the, of the speech, it's dinosaurs. So, t t t t so sorry, sorry. T t t t Tyrannosaurus Rex has short arms. <clears throat> yeah, it changed. Don't worry about it. You can sit down. You could, you could just go tomorrow. It's all right. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, man, this is why you don't show up to school high, bro. Man, smoking too much. Greening out. ODing on the devil's lettuce. Whatever you'd like to call it, many of us have been there at least once in our lifetime. And man, I'll be the first to say it is not fun. But I do actually have a funny story about my first time greening out. I, I mean, it's funny now, but when it happened, I was shitting myself. So this story dates way back when I was just a young jit. I was still in eighth grade. And man, don't ask me why, but it takes place on a Thursday on a school night. All right, so it's a Thursday at 7 p.m. My friends and I are just headed to this girl's house. We'll call her Mary. So when me and my friends arrive at Mary's house, I quickly find out her dad is pretty chill. <coughs> Yo, what's up? And you know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So we'll just say Mary was no stranger smoking some gas now and then. With that being said, I kinda was. I had only smoked a few times, and the times that I had smoked, it wasn't anything crazy. So walking into the Mary household, I could kind of tell we were going to smoke. So we all just went to her room and talked for about five minutes until all my friends started smoking. And it was out of some strangely shaped water bottle I had never seen before. And listen bro, it was a Thursday on a school night, so I wasn't really planning on smoking, right? But when you're in middle school, peer pressure just hits differently, bro. So there my dumbass was on a Thursday night using this weirdly shaped water bottle for the first time, knowing that I had a curfew of nine o'clock and I just instantly started coughing. I was definitely the least experienced out of all my friends. So I remember my homies were kind of helping me out, especially my homie, Bob. Bob brought me some water and told me to let him know if it hits too hard. I told him yeah for sure but I'm pretty sure I'm chilling because it had already been a few minutes at this point and it was safe to say I didn't feel anything. And after 10 minutes I remember thinking I bet I'm definitely good by now. I probably just didn't have enough to actually get me high. So shit maybe I can make it back for my 9 o'clock curfew after all. That shit hit me like Mike Tyson in his prime, bro. I don't know why no one told me this new device would have me slump like Nate Robinson, but it's already too late at this point. My vision started to get choppy. It's like I was running 30 frames per second in real life. And of course, the dry eyes starts to kick in and I just get really hot out of nowhere. And I guess at this point, Bob could just see the panic in my face. So Bob was like, come with me. And he brought me to the bathroom. And bro was prepared. He threw down a pillow and a blanket and was just like, you're going to be all right, bro. And as he leaves me in the dark in the bathroom, I can hear from the other room, he's definitely greening out. He's greening? Nah, not chains. Nah, my boy. Rest in peace. Rest in peace? Bro, am I about to die right now? But to be honest, my brain was way too fried to even care. The effects were getting worse by the minute. And as I laid there in the dark on Mary's bathroom floor, I felt my soul leave my body. I was just flying around space and, you know, traveling through the galaxy and shit. But I'm brought back to life because I felt my phone buzzing. And when I woke back up, I had no clue where I was. And then when I looked in the mirror, who the fuck is this guy? Well, I was out here putting the pieces together, trying to figure out who I am. Bob hits me with another, come with me. I got a ride so we can get you back home. But you have to act normal, okay? Uh... Okay, just get in the car. It was his older sister driving. And when I got in the car, I was stressing. Act, act 
cool, bro. Act cool, act cool. Hi, how are you? I'm not high. Fuck. She knows. And the rest of the ride was just pretty much silent. I got out of the car and I stumbled all the way over to the front door. At this point, I was praying my mom was asleep. So I called my brother to open the front door. What's up? Uh, yeah, door, door. At this point, I'm malfunctioning. I'm trying to explain what is happening to my brother, and it pretty much just went like this. Bro, it, is mom awake? Bro, holy, you're gone, bro. I'm sorry, but this, this is the only way, huh? What the hell, bro? I'm not gonna lie, the smack low-key woke me up a little bit. But still, I was way too big to be saved. But at least mom isn't awake. Chains, get up here right now. I'm fucked. The jig is up, bro. I slowly walk up the stairs to my inevitable doom. Still high off my ass, I walk into my mom's room and seal my fate. Yeah, bro, I got grounded for a year and a half. And when I woke up to go to school the next day, I was still baked as hell. It was a snowy Christmas Eve. My brother and I were watching a Christmas movie bundled up beside the fireplace while drinking a cup of hot cocoa. Man, it can't get any better than this. Or can it? What, well, what could possibly enhance these festive activities to their maximum potential? Or, or should I say, who can? So I called up the plug Randall and I'm like, Yo, Randall. Yo, what's up, cuh? L let me get some of that Christmas tree OG. Oh, shit. L let me get some of that mean green Grinch. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh. Some of that Rudolph Red Eyes. You know what I'm saying? I could, I. But the thing is, I can't deliver right now, cuh. What, what, why not? What, well, you see, cuh, me and the family are setting up milk and cookies for Santa Claus, cuh. Oh, shit, Randall. I didn't know you were a family man like that, cuh. You already know it's Christmas Eve and shit, but uh, if you really need some of that mean green Grinch, Grinch, come by the crib, pick it up. Say less. Randall sent his address and it was only a 15 minute drive. So we walk outside to go hop in the whip and I'm like, what? what? Where the fuck did the whip go? Uh, it, it should be right here. Oh, fuck. I mean, the entirety of the whip had been covered in snow. I mean, in these conditions, not only would it be impossible to drive, but many would say it wouldn't even be possible to walk to Randall's crib. However, on this specific Christmas Eve, there was nothing that was going to get between us and that Christmas tree. Oh, gee. So we throw on our snow attire and take our first step off the porch. And God damn, that shit was deeper than I thought. As we started our journey to Randall's house in waist high snow, I was filled with determination. The type of determination that just dipped after five minutes of wet sauce possible hypothermia and no end in sight bro sh should we just head back now I, I mean we still got like 30 more minutes to go to randall's house i don't think i could do it bro chains just picture this mariah carey is playing in the background your nose is filled with the sweet scent of freshly baked cookies while we get baked as fuck and drink as much eggnog as we want Shit, you're right. We, we can't stop now. So we walked and walked in what seemed to be like endless amounts of snow. But then a brightness slowly revealed itself through the snowfall. A beautifully decorated house with reindeer on the roof and Santa Claus in the chimney. We had made it. We made it to the boy Randall's crib. Randall invites us inside and out of the Christmas spirit, the homie Randall seshes us up for the free ski. And at last, I got a taste of that Rudolph Red Eyes Kush and in that moment, it was all worth it. So me, Randall, and my brother smoke up for a while, but then my brother realizes, oh shit, it's already 11 p.m. We gotta make it back for Christmas. Damn, you're right. Wait, wait, wait. Before you just go, cut, take some for the road. Yo, thank you, bro. So we begin our journey back home, except this time, this time something was different. 
We were zooted as fuck. And if you've ever been in the cold while being more baked than some gingerbread, you would know that shit is ass. And as my brother and I walked through the snow, the snowfall continued to get worse and worse. And after 30 minutes of walking back home while being higher than Santa's sleigh, my legs just folded, bro. Oh shit, Chains, are you good? Bro, it, it's too far. You're gonna have to make it back without me. Bro, shut up. You're fine. You're just high oh, as fuck. Oh, Nichan. Bro, get your bitch ass up. Let me go. You, you need to make it back before Christmas starts. Yo, let, just let get up, go. bro. Stop playing around. <sighs> oh, my fucking God. And then I fucking died. Maybe that mean green Grinch was gonna be what stole my Christmas after all. Man, you're not fucking dead. Until my brother decks my ass harder than the boughs of holly. Bro quite literally slapped me back to reality. And that was all I needed to keep going. But we only had 5 minutes to make it back to the house before Christmas. So we use everything we have left. We see the red and green glowing lights in the distance getting closer and closer and... And by a Christmas miracle, at last we could sit down on the couch bundled up next to the fireplace, watching a holiday movie, drinking some hot cocoa, all while zooted off that Christmas tree OG.